Hello everybody and welcome to another Arkham Horror video. Today we're going to be... You've been asking for it, and even though I was saying no, I was like, no, I'm not going to make this video. Brynn suggested something that honestly seemed like a good place to start with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to recommend two versatile cards for each, for not each investigator, for five random investigators. We're starting with five, we're dipping our toes in, we're gonna see what you guys think, how it does, so if you wanna see more of this, why don't you let us know in the comments, smash that like button, share this video with your friends who also like Arkham Horror. Uh, the quick, uh, important question is what is versatile? I really should have this prepared <laughs> on the screen for what versatile is for this series. Oh, well, Justin's looking that up. He says that uh, he gave into this after much uh, browbeating. But at the end of the day, if like three of you say you want a video, Justin will give it. <laughs> yeah. That's like actually all it takes. It is. It's really easy. You just say, "Hey, we want this," and I'll be like, "Yeah, let's let's do yeah, it." Yeah. Then he because... shows up and he's like, "Travis and Brynn, we're doing this. The people demand it." And like there's uh, there's like two people that said they wanted this. Yep. And Justin's like, "Yeah." Yep. It's all true. That's all of them. It's because, I mean, we do it for you guys. That's why we do these videos, right? All right, let me just get Versatile on the screen. Bryn, while I'm getting this up here, why don't you say why we're not going to be doing any of the Dunwich oh, investigators? Sure. Yeah, so if, if we, uh, as we continue through this series, we are not going to be posting any sort of videos concerning the five investigators from the Dunwich Legacy Cycle. Uh, largely on account of you can already just do it. Yeah. It's how they are, you know? You don't need to put a card in your deck that says five extra cards into your deck building size. I spent experience on this, and I can play a, a level zero card of any color. You can just do it. Yes. All the time. So we have Versatile here. You get plus five deck size. Your investigator's deck building options gain one other level zero card from any class. Uh, one thing we should also say... Um, we don't recommend you putting Versatile in, like, a good majority of your decks, if not, like, I want to say, like, 100% of them. Versatile is a neat card. It gets your brain uh, figuring in a way that maybe you can do something. But overall, those kind of, like, that kind of figuring, like, I mean, I can't speak for Travis. I know Bryn's a little bit of a, I call him a dreamer. If you look at, like, the mechanic... <laughs> If you look at like the the terms from Magic the Gathering, there's like the Timmy, Johnny, and Spike. Um, Travis is definitely a Spike through and through, with a bit of a Timmy because he likes. I know he likes dinosaurs and <laughs> in Magic Love the Gathering. Love dinosaurs, man. Uh, My I, mom made me a homemade mask to wear at work, and it's got like dinosaur bones on it. That's super sick. <laughs> It is sick. We're all of us here in at playing board games. I consider ourselves. We like to win. We're all very spikes. Spikes like to win. Brand is he's a little bit of a Johnny though. He likes to, he likes to say can I or not should I. He likes to say can I. Yeah. Um, can this work? Not will it probably work. And like yeah, I'm, there's so many decks that Brand brings to me. He's like, hey, we should, this should be a cool deck, right? I'm like, that's like kind of stupid. <laughs> Like, yeah, you could do it, but, like, why wouldn't you just do this instead? He's like, I don't know. And for me, I'm very much, like, I don't like to have fun. I like to just win. I like my, I, I just, so, like, I would never fathom putting Versatile in, like, any of my decks. Um, but I know people do want to play with Versatile, and we're happy to at least give some things. I will say, though, like, don't expect, like, crazy cards from this, like, we generally like to just look at like what's good. Um, and also honestly with Versatile, it's kind of hard, right? Because what is one card gonna do to break your character wide open? And honestly, the answer for a good chunk of these is not much, right? Like we do have some neat things on this list. So why don't we just dive right in instead of continuing to babble. Starting with Carolyn Fern. And we'll also just start by saying Carolyn Fern she kind of has, like, the entire, like, whatever she wants, she can get. So a versatile is a little bit tricky to find something for. You might be then asking, uh, but, uh, sorry, I'll get to you in a second. You might be asking, Justin, yeah. why did you guys choose Carolyn for this video? I rolled randomly, so. Uh, That's what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was the one we got. 
Um, however, as you can see here, we have Look What I Found and Elusive. Level zero, the untabooed Elusive, just because it's like so good, right? And like... You can still take it with Versatile. Yeah. It yeah, just costs you. Cost you. Oh, XP. That's, yeah. I did not know that. That's spicy. Because it, it doesn't, uh, the, the taboo list doesn't actually change their level. Hmm. It just changes the rules for putting it in your deck. All right, drawing yeah. thing. Let's go. It, you have to pay the XP. <laughs> just put drawing Yeah, drawing thing can stuff. go like an anyone's deck with versatile yes so all right let me just quickly change some of these slides over and just get <laughs> uh, so we like look what i found because you're going to be investigating a bunch and four is not like an astounding book score and this would make it so that when you fail you just don't you get two clues instead that's pretty neat it's better than casting yeah yeah it actually is uh and as we said elusive is just dang fire it's just yeah, like the actual reason for elusive here over some other cards besides being an insanely powerful card is that carolyn don't do monsters so good she only has two punch and two foot and if you can't blow them up with dynamite then you need to find some other way to get around them yeah you can go off on so. your own and while your goon is somewhere else on the board you can just be like i'm not scared of anything i'm literally unstoppable and then when something shows up the goon's like, I gotta come help you. And then you say, no, I'm actually right next to you. I've been behind you the whole time. Yep. Yeah, a uh, big part of the upside with Elusive as well is that Versatile only allows you to include one of them. But if you need to play more than one Elusive in a game... Yeah. What exactly have you been doing? Yeah, you're kind of like... You you might have been making some irresponsible choices. <laughs> yeah, if you need more than like six extra actions in a game... <laughs> Yeah. How far in the hole are you? Yeah, you're pretty far in the hole. All right, who, who do we have next? Mandy Thompson. Whoa, two blue cards. Like Carolyn, Mandy Thompson has kind of like a full um, gamut she has available to her. Now, you might be thinking, well, I could choose, for example, um, Mystic and then use Survivor cards or vice versa or use Rogue cards. And I can still like, I can have like a triple. I can have three colors. I can splash like that. We didn't think about that. We looked at just on blue cards. Um, Tetsuo yeah, you can Mori also play assets from her colors, her off colors as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, with Tetsuo, we went with him because he searches nine cards when he dies, which means you can then grab two item assets. Pendant of the Queen. The thing, it's a thing that she does. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Pendant of yeah. the Queen is an item asset. So when Tetsuo dies you can grab two Pendant of the Queens. Yeah, also, if you're playing a more support-focused Mandy, uh, firstly, large deck size is no no object. That's where you probably live anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're following your, your blue flan friend around, and he can't find his weapon. You're just like, search 12 cards, and if you can't find it, I'm leaving you. I mean, I also like the idea of the Mandy with two Versatiles, and you have a 60-card deck. <laughs> you just... Just playing like magic, regulation baby. for most most card games. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that would be pretty. That'd be pretty fun. Uh, next up is safeguard. Pretty boring, but not moving is good when you're a seeker. Like not having to move. Not moving in general is pretty good. But... Yeah. 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 Free free movement is good if you've got this in Pathfinder, mm -hmm. and you draw any sort of mythos cards. That's like you can't take move actions. You're just laughing your way to the bank. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Nothing matters. You're never taking a move action again. It yeah, it also kind of like it lets your goon on their downturns trade their actions for investigation actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it also has a, um, a neat little thing that doesn't actually like it, it doesn't matter more often than not. Like it doesn't really matter. But the when you have your goon with safeguard following your seeker around the level zero one, the seeker will be uh, will engage the enemy first and you'll essentially lose an action. When you're Mandy Thompson, Thompson, your seeker following your goon around, they'll move into a location and then they'll grab the enemy before you do because they'll be there before you do. When sometimes it can get a little bit messy, but if you're going to be playing safeguard, more often than not, you're going to upgrade to the upgraded one if you're a guardian. But it's something that you avoid if you're using it as your Mandy Thompson versatile splash. splash. Just something to be aware of. Cool. Who's next? Trish! So Trish, uh, 
we were kind of looking at like, the thing is Trish, I've been playing with her. She does a lot of fun things all on her own as well. And she can kind of like cheat the game in cool ways. So a lot of the times when I was thinking of what Trish can do that's powerful and fun, I was just thinking of like, I was like in the know, it's perfect, versatile. But like, that's number one, it's an experience card, Justin, so you can't grab it. Number two, she can already play it. So why would you need versatile for that? So our suggestions for Trish Scarborough are Mysterious Raven because um, it's fast and you can use it to discover a clue without provoking an attack of opportunity to evade an enemy or grab an additional clue from your location. All at the cost of, I mean, one horror does actually matter, right? But better than getting chunked by an enemy that has six foot for some reason that you can't evade, right? Were there any other uh, reasons for why Mysterious Raven made it here for you guys? Uh, it was just a free clue. That was it. Yep. <laughs> Tell me what thy lordly name is on the Knights Plutonian shore. <laughs> uh, I have a soft spot for Pope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's very fair. That's very fair. So. Uh, scene of the crime. Uh, likewise, you just get to discover... A, <laughs> you can discover three clues with this. Seems sick. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what does it cost? Two resources? No test? Yeah. I or mean, you actually, can discover two clues and just evade the enemy. Yeah, that's also still, like, fine. Yeah. Because, like, in two-player, like, then you'll be sick. like, I'm going to leave this location. Goodbye. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another you get one... To, oh, you go, Brent. Sorry. Sorry. No, go. No, no, no. I was going to go on a different tangent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, know, you, draw, you draw an enemy, and he's like, I'm going to kill you. And you're like, what if you told me all the things you know about this first, though? Yeah. And then they monologue a bit, and then you leave. Yeah, you just gonna... walk away yeah. while they're talking to themselves. And that's how we know Trish yeah. is a true spy. It's a pretty good trick. Another one yeah. that we didn't include here, but that I just want to talk about because it was funny, um, was Drawn to the Flame. Like, still very powerful, and then sometimes you might be able to just draw an enemy and get three clues instead, or get two and then evade him and then walk away. That is a pretty good deal as well. Because you draw, for reference, you draw the Mythos card before you get the clues from your location. All right, next up, Marie Lambeau. Whoa, hey, Tetsuo's back. So, <laughs> Bryn, I'm going to pass this one to you first off of why the, co the common similarity for both um, Tetsuo and True Grit here and how they would interact with Baron Sand. Oh. Yeah, okay, so... For those of you not familiar with Marie Lambeau's signature weakness, uh, Baron Samdi is, uh, he takes up your ally slot and he says, when, an when damage is placed on an investigator at your location, you place it, you play, they take an extra damage. Uh, so with these two, they can be assigned damage that would be dealt to anyone at your location. So if the damage is placed on either of these cards, it is not placed on an investigator and they do not take the extra damage regardless of whether they currently possess soak or not so it kind of helps to offset that uh that downside and when he has no downside he just is an asset that has doom on him which enables your ability and baron samdi he was kind of like our focus for this because baron samdi is he's mean he's a bully he's a bully uh, Tetsuo also, when he dies, allows you to search for an item asset. And Travis brought up that uh, there's a lot of good item assets in uh, Mystic that you would like to get, like a Divermus Mysterious, um, Spirit of Thame, I think was also one of them. Like, it just can help you find what you need when he's dead and also potentially circumvent some... I mean, like, you'll need a Charisma if you also want Tetsuo to benefit from... Um, Baron Samdi being in play, right? Because there is that little thing. But also at the same time, just Tetsuo out here to eventually just die, right? Uh, to, as Travis even said, replace a David Renfield, right? Um, and then he can do some stuff and get you something afterwards. Seems not bad. Seems not bad. All right. Our last investigator is my boy Silas Marsh. So I was looking through, I, I, I focused just on skills while trying to find cards for Silas Marsh because that's, that's what he does. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought looking at off color, um, off color skills that weren't innate is the way to go. 
Uh, I wanted, when I saw that these were practice, I was like, so sick, Stylus Marsh with practice makes perfect? This is gonna be incredible, easy recommendation. But he actually doesn't have access to a lot of practice skills in his natural set. So then you'll get practice makes perfect with one versatile, you'll play it and you'll be like, oh boy, I got my overpower, right? Like, good, right? Like that's not amazing, like it's that's still good. Of it. But like you can, it can be better, right? Practice makes perfect is busted. so. It's better to use it when it's busted. Uh, so I went with Hatchet Man and Vicious Blow uh, because you're, your you're the damage dealer as Silas Marsh. And ha a Hatchet Man's kind of like, it's they're ki it's kind of like a Vicious Blow that you're just like saving some, just doing a little bit of extra work for. Uh, as always, you can bring the cards back if they fail. So there's a lot of security in them. And especially with something like Vicious Blow, pairing it up with Silas's Harpoon, meaning that you can deal three damage and then return the Harpoon to your hand and play it again. I mean, to get the Vicious Blow back, so then you can just play it again. Like, that's, that's going to be some good damage that he's able to put out. It's very expensive, and we're not worrying about that. Mm -hmm. And, like, card draw is also an issue, but we're not going to worry about that, right? Like, we're not worrying about the hard realities of Versatile. We're just talking about, like, the power of Versatile right now. Yeah, if you have, what if you have two vicious blows, Justin? Mm -hmm. I mean, with that, that's four damage, right? Like that's so much damage. That's a lot of damage. And then, like at that point, like it really becomes like worth it. And then you get like, yeah, a... yeah. you're paying I... three three money to three three money and two actions. Mm -hmm. There's fair two actions. Yes, to nuke an enemy for four. Yeah. That's kind of neat. And then you also have the failsafe. If you miss, you just put uh, one of the vicious blows back into your hand, and then you get the uh, get, get your elder sign and then drop back. I've not played with Silas with the harpoon. I've been waiting for um, our Insmith Conspiracy run to actually play true Silas. Uh, so a lot of this theory crafting was kind of like a what if, like perfect Christmas land. So I don't know if it's actually going to work. Um, I'm also, spoiler alert, Probably not going to ever do this, but uh, <laughs> uh, I think the idea seems pretty pretty solid in theory without having to worry about having a 35-card deck. Sick. That's versatile, baby. Um, if you have any suggestions for cards that you think would also work for these investigators, let them know in the comments. I do like reading them. Uh, and... Uh, Ultimately, yes, as Travis said, if two or three people say they want to see more, uh, we'll do it. I'll do it. Don't think I won't. That is a threat, by the way. Don't think I won't. I am <laughs> threatening you. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one, and as always, GG's.